Rick, can we just do the chorus of Lord, I give you my... And Cameron, can you just find that slide for us? That's this chorus of our last song, Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. and girls before I start the sermon I just want to check that JP's got his son under control this is going to be a great series this is the first of a series of sermons on the book of Ephesians and I just want to encourage you today to not miss any one of these uh, sermons, these messages, I said to Warwick earlier on, it would be great if we had 25 weeks to go through this amazing book. Just some insights. Today I'll I'll work through chapter 1 and a portion of chapter 3 with you, but just know that you will be blessed immensely. Just love looking upstairs to see all the young people up there. And uh, just great to see you this morning. Look at the title of the series, Living Alive. Isn't that amazing? We are not the walking dead, but we are living and we are alive. I've attended two funerals this week. I have seen death. The casket was closed at the end of one of the services and went up there with the family and kissed her forehead and just impacted by the coldness of her skin, death. But we're talking here today about life, that you and I would be alive and living. Now, today's series, uh, today's message is very much about prayers and how we could leave today with our prayers more than just a cursory phrase or a murmuring discussion, but a life-impacting, life-changing prayer, that kind of prayer. That's the prayer that I am praying you will have a deeper understanding of when you leave today. So please do turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1 this morning. And let me say this, this sermon today will work for you if you have a copy of the Bible. So we do have uh, Bibles in the pews. Uh, We may need to just help uh, those who are in in the hall because we don't have Bibles available. But do whatever you can to get yourself close to a copy of the Word. Uh, Ephesians is written by Paul. And uh, Paul describes himself as, the, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he appoints himself in this role as an apostle because he has been called by God. Now, Paul, his, his name was Saul. That was his Jewish name. Given the name Paul when he had his conversion experience. And Paul is one of the very first leaders of the Christian church. A missionary a church planter, an evangelist, a preacher, a teacher, a theologian, just an amazing man of God was Paul. Of the 27 books that make up the New Testament, the second part of the Bible, 13 of those books are written by Paul. And all of them are letters. He was a prolific letter writer. And he writes this letter to uh, the church in Ephesus and we find that this city, and I'll, I'll just put up a little map on the a screen for you, uh, is in Turkey. Uh, Turkey, you can see there, is next to Greece. And 
Ephesus was the second largest city of the Roman Empire. The Romans were the superpower of that part of the world at that time. And Ephesus was the second biggest city with 250 million people in the city. Now, there was a church there, as Stephen mentioned, that Paul spent significant time uh, at this church. But when he writes to this church in 62 AD, we're in 2011 AD now, so a few years ago, 62 years since Jesus was born, he wrote this letter from prison to the church in Ephesus. And today you will find your prayer life blessed. And let me just summarize what Paul is going to share uh, with us today by just outlining that for you uh, on the screen. We will see uh, that uh, today we will, let's just put that up on the screen, please. We will see from Paul that praying is about praising God and giving him thanks. It's about repenting and accepting God's forgiveness. It's about asking for and receiving God's power. Uh, Prayer is also Yielding, surrendering, giving yourself up to the, the rule, the authority of God. It's just, maybe this is a great time to just pause right here. Could you just bow your heads with me? We just need to, to know that we're in this place as we've been praying through this series. But I'd love for you to hear God's voice today for, for your life. Lord, we, we pause here at this time in the message and just Pray, please, that you would speak to each person here today. You know our hearts. You know what we need to understand from today's message. So please, Lord, speak. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Come with me to verse 3. What you need to understand about verse 3 through to verse 14 is that in the original, in the Greek, it is one sentence. It's just one whole sentence, and he just comes out, and he is just so excited. He is just all this good news to share, all these blessings that he wants to uh, remind the church of, and he just comes out in one big solid hit. It's like that, um, that Queensland team on Wednesday night in the first 30 minutes of the game. They come out, and they just take over the game, and I was in Brisbane on Wednesday night, not at the the game, I'm a supporter of the Blues, it was a terrible place to be on Wednesday uh, night, but it's that idea of just coming out and just right here at the beginning of the book, beginning of this chapter, he comes out and he's so excited to just share all these blessings, the fullness of the glory of who God is and what God means. So, I'd like you to just look at your copy of the text, please, because I'm going to actually read this through, and it won't be all in one sentence, but just just be blessed by what Paul has to say. How we praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. These are the invisible blessings that God gives us now and also in the future. Because we belong to Christ. Long ago, even before he made the world, God loved us, and get this next part, and God chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes, blameless. He chose us. This is amazing. He predestined, he elected, he chose us. Let's keep going as Paul opens this up. His unchanging plan has always been to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is amazing. And it says here that it gave him such great pleasure. Always been his plan to adopt all of us into his family, into God's family, out of Adam's family, which is a family of sin, but into God's family, a perfect family. Let's, let, let's keep going. We're down to verse 6 now. So we praise God for the wonderful kindness he has poured out on us because we belong to his dearly, beloved, his dearly loved son. 
He is so rich in kindness that he purchased our freedom through the blood of his son and our sins are forgiven. Redeemed, you may have in, in your Bible, a word used there. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. You can see why Paul is just so, just out of his skin here, just so excited, just explaining these beautiful truths about what God provides for us. Stay with me, please. We're down to verse 9 now. God's secret plan has now been revealed to us. It is a plan centered on Christ, designed long ago according to His good pleasure. And this is His plan. At the right time, He will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because of Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for He chose us from the beginning, and all things happened just as He decided long ago. This is amazing that God chose us, even before creation, God chose us, and yet at the very same time as God chose us, just stay with me right here, because this is very important. Just watch this. This is, this is theology that's confounded the theologians for years. God cho chose us before we were born, before he created the world. God chose us. And yet, at the very same time, God gives you and me the ability to choose him. Choice choice. God choose you and me, and then God says, but I give you the ability, I give you the option to choose me, so that when you choose me, you have that free choice. When you choose me, you will find that I already chose you. Now, this is, this is the good part. You thought that was the good part. Now, listen to this. We're down to verse 12. God's purpose was that we who were the first to trust in Christ should praise our glorious God. And now you also have heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified or he sealed you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit. Now that is good news. Somebody please say amen. You see, this is what we called God signed the adoption papers. He chose us and he signed on the, on the dotted line. He said, they're part of my family. And then he offers us Jesus Christ. He delivers and Jesus Christ delivers for us this new life. He takes our place. He's purchased by God. He, instead of us, takes the cost, the price. And then we're given this the Holy Spirit to guarantee that all of that that's been given to us, it's going to happen and you have the Holy Spirit and you have the seal, you are identified that you are God's own because you've been given the Holy Spirit, signed, sealed, delivered. You love that? Oh, I love it when I can find Stevie Wonder in the Bible. It's a great thing. Signed, adopted by him. Sealed identified God's Holy Spirit as we pray to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to inspire us with our prayers as He inspires Paul here. But everything centered in Christ. It's just beautiful, the good news of Jesus Christ. And God gives that to us freely today. Let's keep reading. Let's just, let's just see where this leads because verse 17 is the text we're trying to get to this morning. Verse 14. The Spirit is God's guarantee that He will give us everything He promised and that He has purchased us to be His own people. This is just one more reason for us to praise our glorious God. Now look at verse 15, please. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and Lord Jesus and your love for Christians everywhere, I have never stopped thanking God for you. Can we have our next slide, please? 
We've just gone through the first 